thanks for coming in. Um, had some things to talk about. You signed up to come see me today. But before we get started, uh, I don't know if you remember from the last time uh, you were in here and we talked, is everything that we're going to talk about in here is confidential. Okay? Right. So nothing out of here, out of this room, will leave except three different things. Right? Then we have to, I have to tell somebody. All right? And they are if you're gonna uh, you're gonna you're gonna hurt somebody, right. okay? You plan on um, hurting yourself, right. okay? Or you plan on hurting yourself or in, um, engage in self-destructive uh, behavior that may be harmful, right. okay? But anything else after that all stays in here. You understand? That? Yep. Okay. So you're free to um, discuss anything except the, any of those three items. Come on. Okay. And while you're in here, um, I'm going to maybe taking some notes. Okay. Just because everything you're uh, you say to me is important, I want to make sure I get it down for the next time. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So um, so last time I saw you was um, end of last school year Sorry. in May. And how is everything going? I haven't really seen you. Um, it's actually gotten a lot better. A lot, bit, lot better? A lot better. Well, that's good. Yeah. So, how are your classes this year? Um, they've been like, really easy. I've had like, very slow days because I've been able to just whiz through, whiz through my homework and get good grades. So. Yeah. And um, what classes are you taking? Taking Algebra 2, mm -hmm. um, Chemistry, Dynamics of Business, English 3, uh, ROTC, German 3, and ARP. And ARP? Yeah. And they're all doing good? Yeah, they're all doing good. How was your first quarter report card? Uh, all A's and B's. Oh, that's good. Three A's and uh, the rest of B's. Well, I know that's better than last year. That is a lot better than last year. Why do you think you're doing better this year? Because um, last year was kind of like an eye opener. Mm -hmm. Five grade for me to so I see all the stuff and be lazy and I realized I couldn't. So when I started uh, actually my work and not procrastinating, I got better grades. That's good. I think I remember that was one of your big things was procrastination. It was one of the biggest procrastination. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Um, so your teachers are all good? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. That always helps out. Yeah. Um, so what was your... Uh, Goal for coming in here today? Um, I'm not too sure what I want to do after high school. So, about uh, your post secondary after you leave here? Yeah. We gotta figure out some sort of plan. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do you see yourself doing? Um, environmental science mm -hmm. or uh, some sort of engineering for the Air Force. But I don't know now that uh, military has been. Be crazy, I don't know if I'll be able to get into it, which is my big, my biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Um, and have you uh, set up any sort of like, um, do you have any idea how you want to reach that goal? Um, I'm not too sure if I want to go the list it first, and then go through the boot camp, and then, um, Get my college paid for that because I don't want to go to college. I don't want to get out. Um, I don't want to find a job. Or if I go to college first and go and ask a commissioned officer and they get more money on him, do the same thing. So let me see if you want to um, enlist first mm -hmm. and then go into the uh, military. Correct. And do your four years. Yeah. We need to start in Area uh, 1302. Just bring a vacuum cleaner. Need a custodian to take a vacuum cleaner to room 302. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then after you do that, have the military pay for it. Correct. Okay. And then go 20 years in the military. I want to, I want to serve 20 years in the military if possible. Right. And actually retire instead of just say I did my service. So is this something you've done? Discuss with your uh, parents? It is something I've discussed with my parents. 
they keep saying, oh, I need to figure out what I want to do, go fishing or go to Lucifer, and then talk about what I'm going to do from there. Well, I know right now you're in the um, junior Razi program. That's correct. And have you considered going to the Razi program at uh, university? I have, mm -hmm. but uh, money's hard to come by. Mm -hmm. And I've got me and two other brothers that need to go college at the same time. Mm -hmm. There's no way my parents can pay for that. Right. So I'm trying to think of different uh, possibilities to uh, go to college because I'm not the most athletic mm -hmm. or intellectual, so scholarships are hard to get. So I'm trying to think of a So would you say you're kind of thinking about your whole family dynamics and yeah. how you kind of fit in? Yeah. Um, so if you were um, to go to sleep one night and everything you wanted, right, you had something like, you know, a miracle was going to happen, right, mm -hmm. and you woke up and you got everything you wanted to go to college, right, mm -hmm. how would that look? Give me that scenario. You can think about it for a second. I just dropped it on you. But so you were, you know, you go to sleep, mm -hmm. and then during the night, the elves would come in, and they would give you what you wanted. And what would that look like? Not too sure, because, I mean, what I want is a humbling thing. It's not like a right. yeah, self-centered one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I wouldn't be able to describe it from my standpoint. It would kind of have to be how my entire family sees it because it kind of affects them all. Okay. I mean, I'd be pretty, pretty ecstatic. I know my parents would be too. They have to pay for college. Or well, think about it. So this is a miracle. Yeah. You know, this is something, you know. I'd be thanking the Lord. Right. Um, and, you know, that's very nice, you know, thinking about your family. Mm -hmm. But, you know, their family, you know, um, this would help them out, whatever this miracle would be. Yeah. You know. And it would, like, be, you know, set up. You'd have the, um, whatever you wanted. Right there. So it would be, what? I mean, like yeah. I said, you can think about it. I know I just dropped this on you. It could be overwhelming. It'd be overwhelming? Not the uh, bad kind of overwhelming. Right. It'd be overwhelming. So would you still be enlisted? You know, when I thought about enlistment, I wasn't thinking at the time the financial policy were happening. It was later after I started thinking about it. I started thinking about that. Starting on enlistment for the, uh, I remember going on to uh, my dad's promotion ceremony. And watching him get his rank put on his shoulder, and then I, his entire family, all of us, were able to punch rank onto his arm because he had some sticky material where he sewed on. And I just imagine myself standing there getting a mass sergeant rank with my dad wearing his mass sergeant rank and punching that rank onto my arm. And I just thought about the uh, pride and the caution that I would have had in that moment. Well, that's good. That you, could, you know, at, at this point, at this age, you know, you're thinking about something so um, not about yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, normally see that a lot. Um, so who is, so as far as, you know, who are like the um, important people to you right now in your life? The important people to me in my life is mainly my household family mm -hmm. because I wouldn't be where I'm at without them, any one of them. And um, definitely my grandparents because they've just done so much for us and I don't, I don't think I could ever repay them. So they're obviously important figures in my life and that's another reason I wanted to go as a finished officer so I can get more money and help them financially as well because they are elderly and they need the money. Mm -hmm. 
And how would this miracle that you brought up, you know, that you mentioned, how would that make them feel if this came about? If this miracle came about, uh, my family would not push me to do it. They'd say, well, let's think about this, because this miracle would be the money you go to college. Mm -hmm. And it, they'd say, let's sit down, let's think about this before we make any actual decisions. And they wouldn't push me to do it, but they'd be really supportive of anything I said. Which would probably be go to college and get that degree, and then go as a first officer. Right. But they're not the kind of thing to push you into something you don't want to do. So, um, so it sounds like if you get the miracle, you would go to college first. Yeah. And then go to college. Well, that would be your miracle. Yeah. And that would make them feel good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as far as your plan, okay, for after uh, high school, on uh, a um, scale of one to ten, Mm -hmm. With 10 being the best, mm -hmm. and 1 being the lowest, at this point, where do you think, see yourself as far as the plan? And what, what number would you give yourself on a scale? No, there is no really correct answer. It's however you're kind of feeling at this point. Say so maybe uh, 7 or 8. What, 7 or 8? Okay. And how can, um, what do you think you need to do to improve that, to get um, to a 10? Well, I need to get ready to fit because that's one of the common requirements to accept the actual programs to be fit. Mm -hmm. And I would, uh, I mean, I'm not that I'm not fit, I need to get more fit than that day. And I would need to go to a recruiting center to the ASAP. Do you what? It's a uh, military test mm -hmm. it's called the ASVAB, mm -hmm. and the highest score is in 99. And they, the higher the score, the more opportunities you have for uh, different jobs in the military, the lower score, the, uh, the, more, the fewer jobs you have. So I need to get a higher job in the ASVAB. So or this high school. Is this a uh, mental test or physical? It's um, or both. It's mental, it's got all your uh, general education courses on mm -hmm. and it just uh, basically has a certain number for each, uh, like a score for each uh, course and it would take all the scores and they would uh, put all the rest of them into the different uh, occupations and uh, see where you would, where they can have you and they give you that list of occupations to choose from. So is there any other way besides being fit that you could help improve your scale so we can get to a 10? Um, as far as planning or anything? That I've been planning this since 8th grade. Mm -hmm. So uh, I mean, I've, there's always that one thing that could go wrong. And, um, but for the most part, I'm going to be planned out. The only thing is I need to plan B because the military is decreasing. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily taking costumes as much now. So, I mean, there's no definite chance, definite, uh, what's the word? Like a safety net that I'm getting in. I need, I need something to uh, fall back on that does it. And that's where. I get to look great because I've always wanted to do military. Okay. So since you brought up, you know, you had, it sounds like you have a pretty good plan, uh, mm -hmm. but, you know, you brought up a plan B. Um, have you, what would uh, your plan B consist of? I don't know. I mean, I do have some hobbies that I think mm -hmm. if I got good enough, I could do. Because I mean, I'm a magician, mm -hmm. I'm a musician, and I mean, there's always a high demand for music, but I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm good enough yet. So I still need to, uh, I don't think I can fall back on that. And again, 
money is a big thing for the Magic, so I would never fall back on that. So I don't know what other uh, qualifications, what other uh, special quality they have that the uh, United States could use. Because I know I want to work here in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's American. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so working off this plan B is if you were to, um, again, go to sleep and have a miracle happen overnight, the elves came in and your plan B would all be set, what would that look like? I'd be up at a blue clutch shop. Mm -hmm. It, I don't know where it would be. I can't imagine where it would be, but it would be a blue collar. Blue collar. Because I cannot stand the thought of being on my desk 24-7, typing on the computer and writing those papers. Which is one of the uh, push factors for being an officer for me as in the military. Um. And then, if you became an officer, you'd have to do that kind of work? I mean, it, the fields I want to go into, this mm -hmm. is why I picked the fields I want to go into, mm -hmm. it requires a little bit of that, but not necessarily that 24 7 you'd be out with the field with uh, your other services that you'd be working with. Right. And how would the people like you had mentioned, your family and your parents, um, how would that make them feel if that would be the route you went? They'd be supportive. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure how they would react because I've always been military all the way since I can even remember when. I've always wanted to join the military. Mm -hmm. I mean, my dad's retired by serving army. Right. I, he retired as a mass sergeant. I even worked to be at least a mass sergeant when he retired. So when he was there, I'd be the same way as him. Just in a junior officer scale. And that, that goal was accomplished. I was there and he started guarding. But, I mean, I've always been in those places as far as I can remember. And I don't know how they would react, how I would react. Which is why I need this thing be because I've always thought right. military, and I've always had a shot at it. To, like a definite position in the military until recently when it started to heat. I was like, great. Now, you know, it's always good to have a plan B. Mm -hmm. You know, and it seems like, you know, we just need to. Uh, figure out how to get up, you know, to, uh, on the scale, to 10, right, where you're feeling, you know, great about, you know, your plan afterwards. Um, and I think one thing that may, um, is going to help you is, I'm going to give you some homework. Okay. Okay. And it's going to be some drawing, coloring, a little art. All right. Okay. And there you go. I'll go over with you. Not too far forward. Right, okay. It. And this is a coat of arms. Right. And what I think you will get out of this is after you complete it, you put some time and effort into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is you're really going to find out more about yourself and what you really represent. Mm -hmm. Okay. It seems like you've done a lot of thinking about it. And this one would be more like. You can be as artistic as you want. You can color pencil it, mm -hmm. draw with crayons. If you want to make a little collage, you don't have to use this form right here. Okay. Right. Um, but if I just go over it with you real quick, uh, the first square up there is what you like about yourself. Mm -hmm. So these are going to be, you know, draw something that makes you, um, that represents that, you know, real positive. The second one is, so far in your life, what has been your greatest achievement? Mm -hmm. right? What do you feel the most proud about? The third one is your most prized possession. All right. And this doesn't have to be, uh, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, it could be your family. I'm just saying, you know, it doesn't have to be like uh, my bike or anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Number four is what you value most in life. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, so that kind of like gets to, you know, um, what is really important to you, you know. Number five would be a symbol of your personality. Okay, so how you see yourself and your personality. Mm -hmm. Not how others see you, how you see your personality. Okay. And number six is three words to be remembered by. Okay, kind of like your kind of motto, creed. Um, and like I said, you don't have to um, you use this piece of paper if you want to make it bigger, all right, mm -hmm. or find stuff, all right. Um, but I think this will help you out in far as, you know, really kind of honing in on who you are, mm -hmm. all right. And it's good. It takes uh, a lot of different um, characteristics. And so you know, uh, who you are. So that's just one bit of homework. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't worry, this won't be due tomorrow. It's not like my class. Okay. Um, sometime before uh, Christmas break is when I'm going to get these in. And then we can work. All right. And I have another one. A little, uh, I want you to draw a scene from your life. Okay. And I'm not going to grade it on art. All right. Mm -hmm. You can draw stick figures of yourself, but a scene from your life in one picture I want in five years, mm -hmm. okay, where you see yourself, mm -hmm. okay, and then one in ten years, okay, and tell me in this um, how you feel in the scene, right, mm -hmm. like when you draw it and you're in that scene, I want you to um, write down and tell me how you're feeling in that scene and why you chose that or no. okay? And I want you also to write down um, what it's going to take for you to get to that scene. What do you think? All right. And now I don't need paragraphs, you can write bullets, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, I think that'll help. Um, then you, you know, really kind of think about it in a different way and maybe help you, you know, figure out this plan. And then another thing we need to do is sign up for the college test. Okay, the ACT and SATs. Have you signed up for those yet? Or I have not. Have I have not, because I'm actually not too sure how. Well, we can take care of that. That's mm -hmm. part of your homework. All right. So we'll make sure we'll get that on the list here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you need to get what is called your FAFSA form, which are your financial aid forms for colleges. You have to fill those out by the February of your senior year. Okay, and if you don't get those in, you don't get any financial aid, no matter what. Okay, and that's a little more down the road, but these are like little homeworks that we have to take care of. Okay. So your homework is um, do the uh, coat of arms, okay, and then I want the uh, the scenes from life, five years and ten years, right? and then tell me how you feel in the scene and what's going to take for you to get to that scene, and then uh, sign up for the ACT, SAT test, or either one, all right, and the FAFSA. And we'll set up uh, an appointment to see each other again here in the next couple of weeks before uh, Christmas break. All right. So we want to keep the ball moving. You don't want to wait till January of your senior year mm -hmm. to think about this. Do you have any questions? How I can help you out in figuring out this plan? Or mm -hmm. not right now. Right. And just remember, I'm here all the time, and if you need to see me for any of this, you know, your post-secondary plans um, or anything else, all right, that I'll be here, and we can work it out so you have, you know, um, a successful time here and continue on with that success, okay?
Namaste.